G'day guys and gal. I know none of you are thinking it, but I'm going to address it anyway. Yes, the Italian Stallion pretty much has the exact same video as this from a few years ago, which is why, despite me knowing I could do a way better job of it, I refrain from making it. People would often ask me, oh, Major Kill, make a top five psychos video, and I'll be like, oh yeah, good idea, and then bam, I remember it's already been done. But then two things occurred. Firstly, I skimmed through his video at light speed to see who he actually ranked as the top five, and goddamn, it's a shitty list. And secondly, who actually cares if it's been done before? No one has the copyright to top five Warhammer videos. Not even you, GW. Today we'll go over the top five most powerful psychers in the universe of Warhammer 40k, paying special attention to how they achieved their power, as well as some of their more impressive feats. There will be no limit to this list, hence primordial entities, primarchs, and even the galaxy's most powerful vegetable are all allowed to qualify. Like Sparty's list didn't even include the Big E, bit of a bruh moment. An important note is they won't be including characters on this list who are mega powerful and just happen to be psychers. I'll only include characters whose true power comes from their psychic talent, so no Kaldor Drago, I'm afraid. With so many overpowered shit psychers running around, it was hard to put this together. But I like it hard. Let's get into it. The fifth most powerful psyker in the 40k universe is Eldrad Ulthwan. Power doesn't always have to mean that you can shoot the biggest lightning bolt out of your dick. It can be subtle, yet wildly effective. Eldred is the greatest farseer the galaxy has ever seen, at least for the last 10,000 years. He can accurately see and change the future, which has saved multiple craft worlds from obliteration. His foresight is so good that he was able to charge at Abaddon and beat him in a melee fight as he was able to see every outcome of the fight and was able to choose the one that would result in his victory. He is also over 10,000 years old, which is ridiculously old, even for the Eldar. Pretty much all other Eldar Farseers would have crystallized long before getting to even half that age. He took on the Cabal, an organization of Psycho Xenos with extremely powerful abilities, and foresight pretty much all by himself, killing all of them. He isn't some bitch ass wizard that sits back. Eldrad puts Leroy Jenkins to shame with the amount of times he just charges into melee combat against opponents who look as if they could wipe him out with a single strike. Keepers of Secrets, Abaddon, Titans, Catan Shards, they've all been brought low by Space Elf Hugo Weaving. Hell, the dude even blocked an attack from Magnus. All of this power and foresight is only a fraction of his true power. Due to the Elder performing coke fueled galactic gang sodomy, Slanesh was born and laid claim to the souls of all Elder. Hence, Elder who dive too deep into their psychic powers will get eaten by Slanesh. Hence, all Elder basically have to handicap themselves and avoid using their full power. Imagine if Eldred didn't have these constraints. Like, the dude foresaw the Horus Heresy and the future of the galaxy in seemingly better detail than the Emperor did. Eldred's raw power, impressive feats, and large impact on the galaxy make him a deserving member of this prestigious list. And hey, with the awakening of Yuned, who knows how much further he will go. The next sparkly space wizard on this list is Azak Araman. Whilst Araman has always been a naturally gifted psyker, his powers come more from being the most persistent motherfucker in the galaxy rather than raw talent. Plus, performing some extremely questionable and disastrous rituals never hurt. Before all of this though, the man was still a beast. During a duel with a rune priest, Araman was able to burn out and destroy the space wolf's soul, something that has been repeatedly stated to be extremely difficult to do. The Thousand Suns were taken from highly psychic people and given the gene seed of a highly psychic Primarch, hence even their rank and file psych is a top tier. They have a sorcery system where they basically allocate their librarians into different specialties. Some specialize in precognition, some in warp fire and lightning, etc. Araman started off as the greatest precog, but eventually gained so much power that he is now number one in every category. He's captain of the A-Team. However, I need to be a bit drab for a moment. When people think about powerful psychers, Araman comes up a lot. Like Mr. Spaghetti Muncher over here put Araman as the number one psyker in the galaxy. But he's just like fucking not. The Rubik of Araman, which was Old Mate's attempt to stop his legion from dying of super space gonorrhea, was a failure. It turned most of the Thousand Suns into dusty robots. 
For 10,000 years, Ahriman has been trying to undo the spell without success, but then your Vrain just casually does it in front of Ahriman to prove a point, and she's not even really a Psyker. Ahriman has also been attempting to access the Black Library, which is a hidden Elder Craftworld, so that he can learn its secrets, and whilst he gave it a good shot, he was knocked on his ass by the Elder and was only spared because the Elder had bigger things to worry about. Ahriman is constantly trying to free his own fate and destiny from Titsnitch's control, but all that does is make Titsnitch laugh. Like, Titsnitch finds Ahriman's attempts at freeing his own destiny highly entertaining, which is why he allows Ahriman to continue living. Ahriman has also got his ass handed to him by a shard of Magnus, so whilst Ahriman is incredibly smart, powerful and experienced, he isn't even close to being the strongest Psyker in the galaxy. This next entry might seem a bit controversial, as up until recently, Ahriman was widely considered to be more powerful than Mephitsden. However, with recent lore basically making Mephitsden retardedly OP and giving him some of the most insane feats of power I've ever seen in Warhammer, along with recent lore also showing Ahriman getting knocked on his ass a few times, it's safe to say Mephitsden is now ahead in the game. Mephitsden gained immense psychic power initially through becoming the only Blood Angel to ever overcome the Black Rage. The Black Rage being an affliction that resides within all Blood Angels, that threatens to turn them into mindless ptsd fueled berserkers at a moment's notice. It's generally considered that when a Blood Angel falls to the Black Rage, they are doomed to insanity. All of them, except Mephitsden. After recovering from the Rage, the newly reborn Mephitsden became the Lord of Death, and he gained some obscene psychic powers. Stuff ranging from flying with flaming psychic wings, to bringing time to a complete standstill. Mephitsden's power was further increased when he became the avatar of the Dark Angel God of Baal. It's a bit confusing, but the gist of it is if you were to combine Mephitsden, the Sanguinor, and Dante into one body, you would have Sanguinius reborn. To prove my point even further, there's a scene where Mephitsden is in a ship, and he gets shot. He freezes time and walks around the doomed ship. He spots the pilot with his brains blown out by a bullet, and he considers undoing the damage and bringing the pilot back to life. But then he decides that he should let nature run its course, and he leaves the ship to its fate. Unlike Ahriman, Mephitsden wins through sheer raw power and effort. Like let's say both psychers want to kill a titan, Mephitsden would spawn flaming angel wings, fly up to the titan, and hit it with a fucking Kamehameha while screaming incredibly loudly. Ahriman, on the other hand, would travel back in time, and he would witness the birth of the Titan's pilot. He would then supplant the pilot's father using illusions and warp spaghetti to raise the pilot as his own. Then when the Titan pilot became of age, Ahriman would fake his own death in front of his fake son, leaving the son with hectic daddy issues. Ahriman would then return to the present, and as the Titan prepares to fire on him, he reveals that he is the Titan's long lost father. The Titan pilot would have an emotional breakdown as father and son would embrace. They would speak of many things, life, love, heartbreak, and choices. Then Ahriman would give the Titan pilot cancer and then vanish into the night. I don't know what point I was trying to make, but yeah, Mephitsen is more powerful. So whilst Mephitsen might not be as experienced, knowledgeable, or well versed in magic as Eldrad and Ahriman, his raw power exceeds theirs and is growing every day. Like it's low key insinuated that he will become the darkness to the Sanguinor's light. Our number 2 spot gives us our only Primark on this list, Magnus the Red. Out of all the Primarchs, Magnus had the most potential. Psychic powers give you a hell of an advantage. Like, the number one killer of space marines have always been dickheads who can throw shit with their minds, no matter how pathetic their frail bodies might appear. With Magnus being a mega psycho with fucked powers and a taste for knowledge, it's no surprise that his feats of power are wildly impressive. The Big Red was able to take out an Eldar Titan by himself, and was said to be capable of tearing apart a fleet with his mind. Magnus and the Emperor were able to have long deep psychic conversations, despite being obscene distances from each other. Maggie was also intended to replace the Emperor's role in the Golden Throne. This is a huge deal as Malkador, Another super powerful Psyker could only sit on the Golden Throne for a few hours before dying. Magnus being intended as an indefinite battery for it is a huge testament to his raw power. Unfortunately, Magnus has only ever scraped the surface of his true potential. Due to him being a moody, irresponsible teenager, the Emperor banned him from using warp sorcery. This didn't stop Magnus from using it, but it definitely slowed his progress. Magnus's power was once again dampened when he did something very wrong, and he ruined the Emperor's Webway project, aka humanity's only real chance to beat Chaos. The Biggie called Russ to fetch Magnus, so that together, they might have a chance at fixing shit. But getting Russ, who's racist against red people, and also likes killing shit, to go fetch Magnus, a man that detests fairies, was not a good idea. It'd be like sending a member of the Ku Klux Klan to go donate blood to a transgender black person. 
So when the two brothers met, it was on the battlefield as their legions fought. Despite the magic of Magnus and his sons, Magnus sabotaged his own planet's defenses to punish himself for his stupidity and arrogance. The wars were also backed up by psychic killing sisters of silence, as well as the custodies. When Magnus finally took to the battlefield, his psychic powers were awesome, but they weren't like godlike or anything. He was then badly beaten by Russ, who was able to disrupt his powers with a mighty yif. Magnus then had his spine shattered and was teleported to safety. The shattering of Magnus' spine at the same time as a crude teleportation shattered his soul into multiple shards that he's slowly been putting back together. Since becoming a demon prince, Magnus' raw power has increased. However, with the loss of multiple parts of his soul, as well as Demon Princes having a hard power cap, he has had his ass whooped multiple times. Bjorn the Fell Hand had fucked him up pretty good, and he nearly lost a duel to a Space Wolf Chapter Master. When he fought Gilliman, he had the upper hand, obviously, but G-Man still got on some huge hits, and he survived long enough for help to arrive. So whilst Magnus is the second most powerful Psyker in the galaxy, he could have been significantly more powerful than he is today. I wanted to quickly throw in an honourable mention, Malkador. Malk Daddy was a legendary Psyker, with his greatest feat being hiding a planet in a pocket dimension and force choking a Primarch to near death. But whilst his knowledge was vast, his raw power doesn't really match up to let's say, Mephiston. Malkador was nearly assassinated a few times, and he got obliterated by Magnus the Red, only surviving due to another perpetual making a sacrifice to bring him back. On top of that, he could only handle the Golden Throne for a couple hours, whereas the Biggie and Magnus were said to be able to handle it forever. Malk isn't weak though. For example, some of you might think that Tigris deserves to be on this list, as he was able to overpower the Tyranid hive mind with his psychic might. But if you actually know the lore, it's not that straightforward. Firstly, he was able to survive an attack by a hive mind via a Tyranid conduit, so the hive mind's power was bottlenecked. Plus, he only survived because he had the Staff of Malkador, which contained incredible power. So it's almost Malkador's feat rather than Tigerius's. But yeah, Malkador is a legend and deserves the mention. Now for the number one spot, was there ever a doubt? The Emperor of Mankind. A lot of people know he's filthy powerful, but not many people know how he actually accumulated his power. Well, it was a combo of things. Firstly, the Emperor was a perpetual, which means he is immortal and incredibly difficult to kill. Hence, he had all the time in the world to learn pretty much everything. Current canon also states that he was created via a bunch of highly psychic shamans performing mass suicide, merging their souls into one mega soul. So from the get-go, he was powerful, but no way near what he was like today. After thousands of years of hiding in the shadows, subtly nudging humanity along, the Emperor's knowledge of the warp and science was insane. He combined the two to create legendary armies to begin his galactic conquest. His foresight was also incredibly sharp, although not as sharp as Eldrad's, which helped direct him to even more power. The Emperor would go on to pull a fast one against the Warp Gods, hitting them with a devious lick, and impairing himself even further. With this power, the Emperor performed incredible feats, bashing the shit out of a mighty Void Dragon Shard, psychically forcing Lorga and his entire legion to kneel before him in shame, and summoning the ghost of Ferris as well as thousands of other space marines to help him in the War of the Webway. For most of the Great Crusade, the Emperor fought the greatest Horus the galaxy had to offer, leading his armies from the front line. All the while he was doing this, he was also powering the Astronomicon, which was ages away from him. When the Emperor sacrificed himself to end the Horus Heresy and give mankind a chance, his broken body was put into the Golden Throne. Now when most people get put onto life support, they become a bit weaker. Like would you rather fight one coked up Conor McGregor or 10 comatose Mike Tysons? However, the Emperor's power only grew. Due to pretty much all of humanity worshipping him as a god, as well as thousands of psychers that are fed to him on the daily, his body is withered, but his psychic might has grown. Using his power, he holds the four gods of chaos at bay, whilst powering the Astronomicon. He also occasionally just gives out random powers here and there. The creation of living saints, who are more powerful than even greater demons, was done as an accidental side thought of the Emperor. With the opening of the Great Rift, the galaxy has been flooded with even more psychic energy. This has awoken the Emperor and increased his power even further. Like when Gilliman was killed in God Blight, the Biggie just instantly resurrected him for a laugh, and then he set Nurgle on fire for an even bigger laugh. Every other Psyker, no matter how impressive or arrogant, will always describe themselves as a flickering candle when compared to the blazing sun of the Emperor. There has never been, nor there ever will be a greater Psyker than the God Emperor of Mankind.
If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be. Only $1 per month give you access to a boatload of Battle Mace 40 million hentai. Hit the subscribe button and hit the real subscribe button for more psychic content. Join the Discord for more memes and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.